And we're on air. We are on air. Hi, Internet. (laughs) Internet. Uh, Hi, everyone. My name is Fraser Kane. I'm the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for Sunday, October 20th, 2013. Uh, now, we've got another stupid moon tonight, but so we're going to bring you some beautiful images of the stupid moon, and uh, hopefully that will uh, sort of, that's what we'll get while it washes out the view of the fainter objects in the night sky. But uh, we've got a cool team tonight, including a new guy, although he's not exactly new. Anyway, uh, so first, uh, we're going to talk to Gary Ganella. Hey, Gary. Hi, guys. Now, is this going to be your last show for a few weeks? Is that right? Uh, no, no. you got a couple be, more shows. Uh, yeah, a couple more. Okay, and then you're going to be gone. And then we're getting rid of him. We're done with Gary. Absolutely. He's going on an awesome cruise. Yeah, jerk. To the Panama Canal. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's going to be great. Um, I'll keep it nice and cool out here (laughs) while you're in Panama. (laughs) Would you please? Yeah. Yeah. So Gary's in the L.A. area, and uh, and so he's going to be shooting from his light-polluted skies, which is now also light-polluted by the moon, so it's really a double hit. Um, (laughs) We've got uh, Michael Phillips. North Carolina. Hey, hey, always happy to be here with you look guys. At, and look at this. Notice the three of you here now are in your sort of cozy observing way stations. <laughs> so you're it's no getting longer. Yeah. Yeah. It's cold <laughs> in your, so we need to start having office world astronomer problems. Yeah. Right yeah. Not so rugged anymore. Uh, so yeah, Michael. You know which telescope are you running tonight? Yeah, my my 14 inch is uh, getting some upgrades to the focuser, so it's out of commission for this week, and so I'm going to try my hands at this uh, jury rig 200 millimeter zoom lens that I have on my Canon digital SLR. So I got it set up on a tracking mount, and uh, I got the moon, I got a little bit of the Andromeda galaxy, so we'll see what else I can find here in between. That's great. I mean, the 200 cool. millimeter. That's a that's a telescope at this point. It's a yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty nice close. Movie. It's an f4, so it's you know it's got a good amount of light gathering power to it too. So yeah. Uh, and Roy Salisbury. Hey, Roy. Hello. And uh, you're operating out of Las Vegas with your uh, remote observatory, one state over. And yeah. uh, what's uh, how is how are the observing con- conditions for you in? Uh, at the, how do you pronounce that? Howlapai. Wallapai. Hualapai. 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 Yep. It sounds like it should yep. be in Hawaii somewhere, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, how's, the, uh, how are the skies tonight? The skies are great. The uh, the weather's great. It's just the moon. Moon's yeah. gonna kill it. Yeah. So we're we are two days after the after the full moon, and it is just rising, just when we don't need it, right into the star party. So this this is again we're gonna be complaining about the about the moon tonight. So. Uh, cool. And then, of course, we've got uh, Scott Lewis. Hey, Scott. How's it going, Fraser? I can't uh, wait. You're going to be here in two weeks. I know, I know. I'm going to be down in the L.A. area in a couple of weeks. We're going to be okay. doing a bunch of uh, shooting some video for some of these explainer videos that we're doing. We're going to be at yeah. the YouTube creator space and doing a bunch of stuff there. So. And uh, some collaborations with uh, Space yeah. Fan News. Yeah. And we'll be, yeah. we'll, we'll be uh, taking over L.A. with some space. <laughs> totally. Some space. Yeah, so awesome. if you're going to be, if you live in the L.A. area, drop me a note, and uh, yeah. Okay, and then the new person is uh, James McGee, but he is purely a window right now. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, just, uh, we have a beautiful shot of my apartment complex, so I hope you appreciate this. I do, I do. Uh, <laughs> as long as it turns into something. This is all the uh, all the waiting, all the expectation. But, but right, so James, uh, now you, I was... Thinking this was the first time you've joined us in the virtual star party, but you actually pitched in uh, a few months back when we did the Cosmo Quest 24-hour hangout, and you streamed a beautiful view of Saturn into yes. the hangout. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember, and you usurped us. That's uh, that's what I do. <laughs> and uh, right, but now you are just a disembodied screen, so you. Can... So this is your revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah revenge. <laughs> Is uh, actually, you know what? A lot of the, uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it was the 8.1 because I know you're using uh, Surface. Mm-hmm. The the new MacBooks are having the problem too. So, uh, same kind of thing. The cam, the built-in cameras just aren't working on them right now with the latest version of the, of the operating system. So I'm not upgrading mine. Um, cool. Okay. So uh, right. So if you've never done this before, uh, what this is is we are going to connect up a bunch of telescopes into a live Google Plus Hangout and stream the night sky for you. So we will have the moon, the stupid moon, uh, multiple views of the moon, more Pretty of the moon. Pretty much the moon. 
Yeah. yeah. This thing called Luna, a natural satellite <laughs> yeah, Luna, that yeah, orbits that, the Earth. <laughs> right. Uh, but also some other deep sky objects, and hopefully we can uh, sort of fight through that uh, light pollution and give you a view of the night sky. Uh, we're happy to take requests. Uh, in the past, we had lots of places where we wanted you to participate. Now we just have one, which is, uh, well, two. Or two. Yeah, two. if you're over on the uh, the event page on Google+, go ahead and make any comments, questions, requests uh, there, or on YouTube. And if you're watching it anywhere else, I apologize in advance, but you're going to want to click to watch it over on YouTube and make your comments there. So yes. all the people who are making comments on YouTube, we can definitely see it. We, so, we, we try to catch those comments. It's with comment tracking, gall, wonky, the, yeah. the event page. I, I like doing the event page, so if you have any views that you have yourself, any photos, you can share your photos on the event page here on Google+. And then we also have the infamous or famous comment system on YouTube that you can uh, participate in that community. <laughs> right. And and raise the level. Of yes, YouTube please raise comments. the level a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just one last reminder: if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and that way you'll get notifications. And apparently, notifications are now working again for Hangouts on Air. So if you do a hang, if you if you're looking for the Virtual Star Party or the Space Hangout or Astronomy Cast, when these things have been recorded, they will you'll get a notification if you're if you subscribe to the channel. So. Um, cool. Okay. Well, go ahead and start making any requests that you want, and we'll move through the things that we've got in the night sky. So I'm going to start with uh, with Michael's view, just because this will be the backdrop for our whole night. Now, that's a live view of the moon, right? This is yeah. This is as live as it gets. Like there's a, I use a Canon EOS utility frequently with my digital SLR, and it has a live preview mode, which uh, also enables you to give a an embiggened 200 there percent go. zoom there. So, this is just a 200 millimeter lens attached uh, on a tracking mount to my Canon digital SLR with a. And you can see it wavering a little bit, so it does move, and I can kind of sh shift it back and forth, so we know it's it's real here, too. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Oh, and this so, is yeah, so you can uh, you can see James' view as the moon has just popped out from ah, the, there you go. the cool. building. So. I was hoping he'd have a nice high-res one, too. That looks yeah, good. Yeah, no, this is great. So we can go back and forth and see yeah. the, the, the... Yeah, I, I can help you find the craters. <laughs> I can't help you identify them, but I can help you find them. <laughs> well, there's not that much Terminator one, tonight. That big one in the bottom left there. Uh, we're talking about Ticos? one of these ones down here. Is that Tico? Yeah, oh, yeah, that one, yeah, right. I like the look of this one up here on the top right there because it looks like it has a central peak, maybe. So can you find the uh, the Apollo 11 landing site? I have photographed it before. Wait, I have it. Hold on. I happen to have <laughs> one of these. A lunar atlas? Yeah, let's see if I can find it. Uh, it's labeled there. It is okay. So it's near the Sea of Tranquility. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you can see that in my little. Well, the camera's right, right there. Yeah, your your camera's all angry right at you. So no. Right. right. There we go. Yeah. Oh, to, now, did everybody now, turn your head? Yeah, that way. <laughs> <laughs> now can so you I manage think. that up in your view of the of the moon? Yeah, I think it's. Let's see, Sea of Tranquility is. I think it's down in here. I think it's down it? the next one. So down in that down next here? crater, yeah, and then along that that sort of bottom of that crater, in, from your perspective. Oh, down in here. Yeah, ish. Yeah, it's in that area there. Ish. Yeah. Yeah. I always seem to see that little... white spot that's just on the bottom right of that right. Uh, crater. No, that's the bottom left. The one at the bottom right. That one there? Yeah. All the way over there? Yeah, so that's where the... Uh, uh. <laughs> Trey Rush says, so when are we changing the name to the Virtual Moon Party? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think we got bad timing because we had the... Uh, we had a sort of just before the full moon last week, and now we have just after the full moon now, and so we're just having the worst timing. Normally we only get one bad moon. This time we've had two bad moons in a row. Bad moon? Bad moon rising. All right, I'm going to move ding, ding, ding. over to James' view, which is coming in nicely. Hey, James, this is great. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy that it uh, showed up just in time for the virtual star party. <laughs> I was getting worried. I was like, I said I could go, and then the moon just was slowly creeping up. But uh, kind of Come on, Earth, spin faster. It looks like it might be a little out of focus. Yeah, that's what I was trying to play with. That's why I was bouncing around earlier. So okay, I'm well, I'll just get that as settled that, yeah. as that happens. So. Yeah, no problem. All right, I'm going to move to Gary's view now. Okay, we got uh, M16, the famous eagle. Figured I'd start with that since we're going to lose these shortly. They're going to fall off the uh, edge of the earth. And they won't be around till again next year. So, uh, so here's our friendly neighborhood, Pillars of Creation. Nice, Gary. It's going to go away, and it's going to be sad. Yeah, that's such a nice object. That and the, and the swan. Yep, that's coming up next. Good. And the lagoon. Borg Homer. Yep. All on the list and some other things. Oh, good. Good. All right, I'm going to go over to... Uh, Scott is <laughs> showing us some perspective here. So here we are with the Eagle Nubby. I'm using Stellarium. So I can zoom out a little bit here to see where we're at. So you know, right here by Sagittarius, because we're looking here right into the Milky Way, which is awesome. Let's look into our galaxy. Hey, Venus is up. It is. Wow. Just two the West Coasters, the hell. Yeah. What's up, West Coasters? But yeah, so we we're able to zoom in here uh, with the Eagle Nebula and take a look at it while we're spinning. And I'll be trying to track these as we go along to up to next Very two. cool. Okay, I'll, I'll just zip back and forth. All right, I'm going to go to Roy's view. That is the Cocoon Nebula. That looks great. It's not too washed out. You're, you're battling the moon okay. Yeah, it's a, I've got some better ones, but uh, that one I think was hadn't got dark yet. Now, we got a request for IC-138 in Perseus. Do you want to take a crack at that, uh, Roy? 138? Yeah. See, that one was from... I just had it up. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I'll go find out. Usually they're four-digit ICs, I thought. IC-348. No, IC-138. Yep. Yeah, it's a galaxy... I see 138, but it's too low. It's only at 19 degrees. Give me an hour and it'll be up. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll probably miss it. Um, yeah. 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 It's okay. bare, It's yeah. right on the horizon from where I'm at. Okay. All right. We go back to James' view. That is zoomed right in. Look at that. Look at those. Oh, cramps. very good. Looks like you got some kind of murk in your seeing too, though tonight. Yeah, it's uh, the atmosphere that's making it look uh, out of focus, sadly. And the heat coming off that apartment tower. Oh, no, it has nothing to do with my beautiful apartment complex, I assure you. No. <laughs> it's never warm in Alabama, ever. Oh, Alabama, it's always freezing cold, actually. Yeah, so. Always. And dry. Man, mm -hmm. is it dry down there. Oh, it's it's so dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Fort David in Tampa, Florida, trying to be an astronomer. Here I just have clouds, and so I just I I never get my hopes up. You just don't try. Yeah, yeah I just don't bother. Oh. But for you folks, you know, you see clear skies, and you put a telescope up, and then you're just looking through soup. That's really cool. So what we're seeing there with the waving is actually the atmosphere juggling around the light before it actually reaches his telescope and his detector. So that's another reason why we can see that it's real. And it's also a big reason why we have things like the Hubble Space Telescope. So we don't have to look through really bad seeing. We can actually bypass that whole atmosphere being in our way and see what's going on. Yeah, you guys did a, a hangout with Hubble. Yes, we Which did. It was... Uh, we were over the, the new observation with Comet, Heis, uh, Comet Ison, which was the observations were on the 8th and 9th of October. And so we had the, the planetary scientists and astronomers there that were going through the images and seeing, uh, first of all, how we make them not look terrible because getting raw data from the Hubble you're dealing with, with cosmic rays and all sorts of different artifacts, when you're tracing one, chasing one object to get your... Uh, exposure, you're seeing star trails the entire time too, so you do have to compensate for that. 
and uh, it's it's created quite a a conversation on YouTube. But, uh, yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah. We're dealing with this as well, right? The situation where every one of the major comments that come through, people just think they're that it's another spacecraft or some NASA cover up or whatever. It happened with McNaught. It happened with Elenin. It happened with man, just one after Everything. the other. Lovejoy. Yeah. Every I mean, time, people just think these comets are somehow, I don't know what they think, dangerous. I mean, it's a know. great testament to human curiosity that we still are inspired by the heavens and by the cosmos out there. These are really awesome things. However, it just seems like um, we're more prone to believe in things that aren't science than things that we can, you know, identify and, and it just go through and do some experimentation on. So we're, we're always trying to find new things. A big reason why Hubble is looking at ISIM is because it is a sun grazer. So we'll be going really close to the sun. We're wanting to see uh, how it interacts while it goes really close. Um, but then on the opposite end of that, people are like, oh, it's really a top secret mission and it's aliens. Planet X. <laughs> yeah. Personally, I'm uh, ready to drink the Kool-Aid myself. Okay. You're ready? I'm ready for the Kool-Aid. <laughs> You're ready that it, that it's aliens come to take us away? It is aliens that's coming away. I, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ten foil hats and all. Um, so Wesley uh, uh, Daflita says, the virtual star party needs someone from the southern hemisphere. There's a whole portion of the sky being ignored. Yes, yes. we <laughs> do. Tell us something we don't know. We, yeah. we have some. They're also uh, on the southern hemisphere, but on the other side of the world. So yeah. it's daytime for them while yeah. it's nighttime for us. Uh, okay, I'm going to move to uh, to Gary's view. Because the Earth is a sphere. It's the lobster uh, nebula. Yeah, yeah, or the swan, the however you want to call it. I the see more of a nebula. prawn. I imagine a prawn. Well, it's a lobster. Like great big antennae. There's antenna. the prawn there. There we go. And so all these objects that Gary's been showing are examples of star-forming nebulae. So you can see these really bright, bright regions are these gigantic uh, class O stars that are pumping out massive amounts of radiation, and this radiation brightens up the whole, illuminates the whole area around them. And, uh, and then you can see all of this gas and dust. And within a lot of these places, there's these knots of gas and dust in each one of those inside has these star forming regions. I don't know if you can you can't see them so well in uh, in this one. And the great thing is those though all those bright stars that are they're lighting up this region, they're all going to detonate as supernovae in the next few million years and seed the whole nebula with more raw material that the the heavy elements. Yeah, the the heavy elements, the metals, the kinds of things that that planets and stars like ours need. You can't have life without those heavier elements. Yeah, there's a few of the dark knots that you can see in yeah, here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And these are all, all the ones I've been taking are in general direction of the center of our galaxy in the Sagittarius area. Yeah, just beautiful. So if we could see it, we'd see the center of the galaxy. Well, exactly. Here's over the area, and we'll see. All right, I got Scott's view now, so we'll see where it is. Here's the center of the galaxy that we're looking into. And it's also known as the Omega Nebula M17. And zooming in here, real nice, in color. But you know, this is this just to the side. It's just really rotated 90 degrees from what Gary has, and this is what we're seeing. God, that's great. Very cool. Okay, I'm going to go to Roy's view, and Roy is showing us the other side of the star life cycle. So this is the yes, uh, this the is... Veil Nebula, right? This is the Western Veil Nebula, which is part of a supernova remnant. And uh, it's it, you can't see the whole thing. It's such a huge chunk of the sky. You can only just see these little pieces of it. Right. And my camera orientation on my scope isn't where I can even get the get it in landscape. It's it goes across the uh, the image there. So I rotated it over where normal people normally see it, but that's not the orientation of my camera. We're not normal people over here, Roy. You should know yeah. that now. Again, though, I'm. Uh... <laughs> You're saying that you're having a bad moon tonight. I think that it looks, looks great. Uh, it looks really great. So. That was a five-minute exposure through hydrogen alpha. Ah, okay, <laughs> that explains <laughs> it. 
Right, so you're really cranking the light on this one. So yeah. Wesley asked a question real quick over here on, on YouTube is, you know, why can't we use softwares to take averages of distortion and correct them? I think he's talking about the seeing. And we do have something like that. It's called adaptive optics, which are awesome, but it's still just an average. So you're dealing with things to where it is compensating for the seeing, but because you are having to compensate it, it's always going to be an estimate. And you're always going to have a measure of error going on with each side while you're adapting to the atmosphere of what's going on. So it's always better just to remove that variable altogether. But if we did that here on Earth, we would die. So we decide to, to take our instrument outside of Earth and make it a little bit easier to look through. So the, and there's a whole scale that, that um, people will use to measure how distorted the atmosphere is. And typically it's either you know, just generically seeing, or sometimes it goes by Pickering seeing, which there was a fellow who came up with you know, absolute criteria for, you know, an airy disk on a star, and there's like 1 through 10. So, you know, the seeing can be so detrimental that even adaptive optics would not be very useful. And that, that all actually works in infrared anyways, I think, right now. The AO is something that's being trialed, I think, in yeah, one of the Keck telescopes, isn't it? It's still, the adaptive it's still, optics? Yeah, the adaptive yeah. optics. No, no, adaptive it's optics is, new. Uh, is... Yeah, it's no, I can get in decade. Decade for 10 years. Plus. I can get an adaptive optics just for my scope. Yeah. yeah. But I think it only works in infrared, though. No, no, yeah. they, they, no. they use them in visible light as well. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the adaptive optics are amazing on the big telescopes like the Keck and the, uh, the Very Large Telescope, and I think the Gemini does it is they have this series of pistons underneath the, the main mirror, and these pistons push and distort the mirror to mimic the, the perturbations in the atmosphere. And they yeah, provide... they use a laser to shoot it out yeah, and bounce it back. Yeah, they shoot this laser up into... That's right. So they shoot this laser up into space. They, get the, the, they see the star, the, the artificial star, and they know what it's supposed to look like. And then as they see the distortions, then they know... That, the, that that's the atmospheric distortions that are happening to the rest of the sky or in, the, in that area, and so then they compensate in the telescope, and it's amazing how much better vision they can get with these adaptive optic systems. But you can get one for, a, like, a, like, a home telescope? Yeah. I'm sure that's um, uh, cheap. It, the SBIG, the Santa Barbara Imaging Group, makes one. I think uh, Orion makes one, too, I think. Yeah, all they all they really do is their movable lenses. They're not like yeah, the, they've uh, got the a, real adaptive Yeah, they've got optics. a lens in front of the in front of the camera that uses a guide scope that will move the move the little piece of glass in front of there really fast. Yeah, cuz the uh, the real adaptive optics they either move the mirror or like the one I saw them putting on um, Palomar, it's a second surface and that each individual pixel in that surface moves. They call it a wavefront, so they actually adjust to the wavefront of light coming in. And, and it Tom, costs about a million dollars. Yeah, Tom Davis saying uh, Orion sells AO for simple amateur usage as well. So, so there you go. That's yeah. something new I didn't realize, yeah. I would have said, no, it's not possible for home use. Um, okay, I'm going to go to Gary's view first. And you got to know what this is. Yeah, it's Homer, Homer, Borg Homer. Borg Homer, right? Yeah. Otherwise known as the Lagoon Nebula. Dope, but, man. I was gonna say I, I can't, is... I can't look at that anymore. I even know what it, what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I know. It's, we're ruined, aren't we? I'm gonna start looking in the Stellarium. Where's the Borg? Yeah, you can't I, find, I can't it. find it. <laughs> but this one's got a lot of the really nice little dark knots that are all star forming regions. There's all kinds of, uh, as Slardy Bard Fast would say, fiddly bits. Fiddly bits, absolutely. Where are the fjords? I'm not seeing right, fjords. right there, some. Oh, there's the fjords. Very good. Great star forming regions in there. Is that the snot ball coming off of his nose? Well, it could be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're still fiddly yeah, bits, whatever you say. So when we're seeing these star forming regions, it's, it's really dense and actually cold gas, and so that's what you actually need. It needs to be really cold instead of being really warm, because if it gets, it's hot, there's a lot of energy there, it ends up pushing away before anything can, can crunch down and form an accretion disk in a protostar. So what we're seeing there, those tendrils coming out, there's lots and lots of this interstellar medium and this gas that's actually being able to crunch down faster than it can heat up. And that's actually what allows us to get these star-forming regions and cause these awesome things like here in the Orion Nebula and things like that. 
And board Homer. And board, and Homer. board Homer. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to go to Michael's view. Yeah, right, right before I showed you the moon, I took a few pictures of uh, the Andromeda Galaxy. And I don't know if this is just bad or lack of flats that I'm getting this artifact here, or if this is actually just an effect of the moon rising. But uh, I got the main part there, and you can see the... Um, the dust lane's pretty well there. I think there's at least two that I can see here. So here, Scott's going to show you how to find Andromeda. Here yeah. we go. So the Great Nebula in Andromeda, which is its old name, but uh, this is our closest major galaxy to us, is in the constellation Andromeda, of all places. And Can you go out for one second? So, I mean, if, if people are familiar with Cassiopeia, you should be able to find Andromeda. It's that big W in the sky. So there's Cassiopeia, or Cassiopeia, however you want to pronounce it. And See, the way I always did it was I, I found the... Uh, Peg Andromeda's attached to, to Pegasus there, and you see the, the box. Right? Yeah, there's that the box square. shape up on the top there. And then the one corner of it forks into these two trails that kind of deviate from each other as you as you star hop across. There's almost like pairs of stars in Andromeda. And, and I think when you get to the second grouping... And you hop in the direction of the of the two stars there, then you find it right there. That's the way I always did it. Yeah. So yeah. works for me. But. but what's great about it is you can see it with your with your own eyeballs. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. If you got nice dark skies, you can see it. And, and it's yeah. What's the, what's the galaxy on the top just to the left there? Because I got that one too. Mine's an inverted I'm, view. I'm, it's I'm one one ten. Yeah. So you can see, I got one ten just uh, kind of mirrored from the way it's in Stellarium there. Marco Salvador says that it's it's Zombie Homer. Hold on, let me just go back and take a look. Zombie Homer. <laughs> zombie Homer, yeah. Yeah, I yeah that could work too, yeah. I guess we just see the board because it's like that glowing eye. There's right. the eye and the implants. Yeah. That might that might be a little old school. I think the next generation Star Trek was from the 90s, though, wasn't it? So going back 20 years. So the kids these days have no <laughs> idea what we're talking about. No, yeah. they're all zombies. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom Everything's zombies. Resistance is something, something. <laughs> crazy? Oh, that's classic. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> you guys are good one, Tom. Thank you. Oh man. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to James' view because he's just delivering this great view of the moon. Although now we're seeing the washed out, blasted radiation. Oh, I I was I'm working on a script for a for a like for the YouTube channel and for one of these explainers talking about uh, how reflective the moon is and. It's, it's really like interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's like asphalt. But the, yeah. the trick is like when the sun is is hitting the moon directly, then it's very very bright. But when the moon is at a really steep angle, like you're seeing it as a half moon or a crescent moon, then then the sunlight is hitting it at a really low angle, and so you get these big long crate these big long shadows across the surface of the moon. And so not only is part of the moon illuminated, but from our perspective, big chunks of it are also shadowed. And so you get much less illumination coming off the moon than you would normally expect. So, it's, so if it's a, if it's you know if, if half of the moon is illuminated from our perspective, it's not half as bright. It's like 10% as bright right. as when it's fully illuminated. Because if you went down and could stand on the surface, you would just see shadows everywhere. So it's like having a spotlight directly on your face or having along an entire wall. And so it's getting that same amount of light, but it's being spread out. No, but you're limited all... to the surface area. Right, there's not but, much that's actually getting there. But also, the surface itself is covered in shadows. Right. So the surface of the moon is covered in shadows, as opposed to when it's being hit directly from, from the top. So, it's just I I, I it, it never really thought about it that way, but it's just such a neat way to to explain it why it's so much brighter when it's a full moon. Has anyone ever gotten a, seen the shadow from Venus? Because apparently you can. Uh, you know, if you go out really dark skies, you can see a shadow. I'm going to go to Roy's view. A shadow, shadow from, from Venus. Venus. Yeah, from Venus. There's three objects in the night sky that you, that you can oh, get from okay. the sky right. that you can get a shadow from, right? Yep. So you can get a shadow from the sun, obviously, a shadow from the moon, and you can get shadows from Venus. And the way you do the shadow from Venus is you go when it's, you know, there's no moon, it's a new moon, and Venus is really bright at its closest, brightest point, and then go to a dark place where you're going to get no light pollution, and then hold like a piece of white paper out and uh, see if your hand will cast shadows onto that paper. 
and it should when it's... Uh, so I think it's the next <laughs> thing we should do for the VSP. We've done really big events here, so let's do <laughs> Venus Shadows. And Live the- Venus Shadows. Done. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so Roy, what do we got here? This is the other part of the Veil Nebula. This is the part of the Eastern Veil Nebula. Uh, I love this object so yeah. much. Yeah. It's gorgeous. I just love the way that it just wisps, and it looks like it looks like a space water spout. So you know, like a tornado on water. That's just what I visualize. It's just a spinning vortex of awesome sauce in it, space. <laughs> I mean, it's so fortunate that we have this supernova explosion that that I think. I mean, the, from our perspective, it looks like it just detonated, and we're seeing the ring expand from our perspective, and it's so cool. Right, and so you can just see this, and so we're only going to see this for a few thousand years, and then it'll all fade away, and that'll be that. Do you? Do they have in uh, in Stellarium, Scott? Do you have the whole the whole Veil Nebula? Um, it doesn't actually show it, so I can go to the Veil. It gives me the area that it's at, but it won't oh, okay. actually show me the representation of it. So, I mean, if you if you see the whole thing, it's huge. Yeah, it's enormous. I, Gary. Uh, I'm sure you have too, Roy. Have you done a composite of everything? Just show how massive it is. I did a quick one. I'm uh, maybe a year or so ago. Let me see if I can pull it up. Can you pull up the picture? Yeah, it was a quick composite that I did. There it is. It really looks like a the Death Star being exploded. Yeah, I love it. No, oh, yeah. that's a great. Did have you got can... have you, Gary? Have you uh, done an image of that of all of it? I... I haven't. I haven't composited it. Okay. I'm, I'm missing a one. corner, but... Oh, here we go. You can see down here is the, where they did the first one, down in the lower uh, right, or in the, the right side. That's mm-hmm. the witch's broom part, right? Yeah, that's the first one I did. And then I came all the way over here to the eastern side and did this one. So I'm just getting just this part right up here. Right. Um, Ronald Minch has provided us uh, coordinates for Ison, and I believe it's not up till morning time. But <laughs> yeah, it's really it's just yeah. Before, um, the right. plan, Ronald, is in the next couple of weeks we will have some of our UK friends try and bring us a live view of Ison. So, so that is uh, that's coming. But if you want a, like a week and a half year old, a year old, week and a half old image, uh, you can head on over to HubbleSite.org, and they have everything ISIN there on the Hubble Space Telescope's webpage. Take and you can Hubble actually Space download, Telescope. you can download the, the original data. And if, I mean, if you like bits files, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why you would. Is it live, Scott? Are they doing it's, it live? It's not live, but they did it live at the time. Did they? You, no, they didn't. Not in my Hangout, no. No, but no. How else do you image besides live? Oh, Gary, go back to your picture. I was just about to click oh, on you. Okay. Hang on. Going back there, I was going to show the full, not what I took, but I was going to show the full veil, but I'll do yeah, that in a second. Veil. Show the full veil. Show sure, yeah. whatever. Oh, now, now, now I'm looking at your galaxy. Yeah, this is M33. Nice. Triangulum. And that is a uh, two-minute exposure. Oh, that's great. So much star formation in that galaxy. Yeah, a lot going on. It's gorgeous in color, but unfortunately I'm just doing... One color. Give you uh, give you a ten minutes and you can produce a color image. You know, it, it's could. funny. I, I was fiddling with it. Um, I didn't get any good results off of it, but I noticed in, in hydrogen alpha it looks a lot different than it does in in color, right? Because hydrogen alpha targets specifically the star formation regions, whereas in color you see all the different components of it. So yeah, you, this is this is from the sky. So this is the whole the the purple box is my field of view. So Which if I move this anyway. you have a huge down to here, you know, you see I get that, or I can move to here and get this part, and then here's this part way down here. So this this is a massive object. Um, three moons fit across my field of view, and this view from here to here. I can put three moons in there. So Redshift so, 40 is saying on, on YouTube that it's 36 times the size of the moon. Yeah, it, it's, it's massive. Yeah. Uh, I did see one here for Pleiades. It is up right now, but it's really low to the horizon. So I got it. it. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, oh, oh and nice uh, field, too. Frank Nelson is saying on uh, Google Plus on the event page that a high school kid got a shadow off of Jupiter. 
what? which is amazing. Yeah, I he got a what off of Jupiter? A, a shadow from Jupiter. Right? So like we were talking about he got a shadow from Venus, he got a shadow from Jupiter. Like one of like one of the Jovian moons, you mean? No, no, like no. like he was he was able to cast light off of Jupiter. Yeah, 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 I got you. Yeah, wow. From yeah, from Jupiter, which is that's cool. impressive. So uh, I know people have gotten it with well, it's a little washed out. Um, I'm, I'm shooting M45, the Pleiades, right now, but I think the two-minute exposure is a little washed out on me here. A little more like an exposure. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can uh, change this around a little bit. Photoshop magic, maybe. Crank it back. But I guess are you shooting in color, though, right? Yeah, it's in color. I do have a light pollution filter, but I don't have a moon filter. So <laughs> <laughs> you get rid of that pesky moon. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go back to, uh, to James's view. Now we're cracking. Look at this. This is good. I love that you're able to see some of the interior detail on that, that one crater on the right-hand side. Yeah. And you see you have these moments where it's like it, it's just crystal clear for a second and then it moves on. Right. And this is how astro astronomers make these really great images of planets is they stack. So they'll take video uh, of an object, which I think you know, James is probably doing that right now. You can you can take video of the object, and then you just take all the frames. And you just composite the best best frames together to make a, a really clear image. You know, what's really fun is uh, capturing Venus. Uh, it's uh, very distorted uh, whenever you take it. Uh, I mean, it doesn't even resolve as a sphere, but yet whenever you actually uh, you know stack it and register stacks. Uh, it resolves as fine and it looks amazing. I mean, sadly, of course, no surface detail, but uh, it's quite a quite a trophy. I, I like yeah. being able to see the phases of Venus too. That's just awesome. Just you know, we, just like we have phases of the Moon, which is an awesome app on the Google Play and iTunes Store, by the way. Yes, it um, is. <laughs> shameless plug for Fraser. Thank but, you But uh, we're we're able to see Venus at its different phases just because of the angle that we're looking at it. So we have to release phases of Venus. We should. Yeah. We should. So you just you just have to have pictures of fuzzy blobs that are just slightly askew. And you got to release it on the the uh, surface. <laughs> yeah, you have to yeah. do it in the Microsoft Marketplace or whatever yeah. they call their thing. Yeah. If you could just if you could just do that for me, that'd be great. We'll get on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Yeah, I tell you what, I'll, I'll find a way to port it to x86 for you, and just... <laughs> yeah. You know, I think you can do BlueStacks. There's that Android program called BlueStacks. You can run Android programs on Windows. Okay, Michael, you're making it worse. This is just getting more brighter. Is it daytime uh, yeah. now? It may as well be. I backed it down to a minute exposure. Still too you know much. what? It's, it's at ISO 800. Maybe I can... I'm, I'm feebly trying to capture nebulosity at some point, but I don't think tonight's the night for that. Yeah. Just get some stars, some nice, pretty yeah. color stars. I'm going to move to Gary's view. Uh, the Andromeda M31, and I've got a second one cooking. This is uh, a two-minute at no binning. So yeah, I've I think the this... mood is really coming at you tonight on this one. Well, I did this so I could zoom in a little bit, and we can see some of the dark lanes yeah. in the arms, but I'm also cooking a, a two minute at four by four, so we should see a lot more of the outlying region yeah. of the galaxy. That's about uh, 10, 20 seconds away from being done. But you can see some of the nice dark lanes in this one. Yeah. So since you're shooting an H-alpha, does that mean you're cooking with hydrogen gas? <laughs> I am. Uh, Yes. Cook it with gas. Cook it with gas. Cook it with gas. All right, go back to James view for a second while we wait for that. He's right on the Terminator now. Oh, have you got an updated image now, Gary? Um, no, not yet. No. Okay. 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 Good. So, uh, Mike um, Sterling is wondering why your universal remote is sitting on top of your screen. Uh, it's not, <laughs> it's not a universal remote for the telly or anything like that. It's uh, the same thing that you would have your go-to on a on a Celestron uh, next star, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's basically what I'm. I, I took my old. Um, I have an old mount that uh, my eight-inch came with, and I'm trying to drive it remotely using this next remote package. Hey, that's not too bad, right? So this is F4 ISO 200. 
one minute exposure. Yeah, so regarding ICE, I can see a conversation Tom and Sterling are talking about, uh, no, Tom, Tom and Ronald are talking about uh, uh, ICE, and we're still about five weeks away from perihelion, so we're still about five weeks away from it making its closest approach to the sun. Right. That's when it's going to get just crazy. We hope. We hope. Or it'll be just... <laughs> or just nothing. Come on. It'll, just, it'll detonate and that'll be that. So I, I've been aliens. checking up on it weekly. Like, I go to the Minor Planet Center, and, and I don't know how accurate their forecasts are. I would hope they would be reasonably accurate, but it, it brightens very rapidly around that time, and then yeah. it fades back towards where it is now almost. So yeah. I think it's still at, like, magnitude 8 or 10, maybe. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it's definitely visible right now. Yeah, it's definitely... Have you, t have you taken a picture of it yet? I have not. No, my skies have just been so terrible. This is the first time I've been out in three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Have you taken a crack at it yet, Roy? No. <laughs> okay. You're just going to wait until it's better? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Know, I'm I load up the, the most recent image because I, I still think it's gorgeous, even if it is taken from Hubble. From Hubble, yeah. That's, that's yeah. A, you know, it's a piece of junk. Well, you know what? Right, pretty you know? soon, if it really brightens up and gets big, Hubble's going to be pointless. Hubble will be hopeless. Right. It'll just be able to capture the nucleus, and that's it. That's right. Wow. Yeah. yeah hey, here's the um, most recent. The longer exposure. You can see how much more of, uh, of oh, the yeah. disk oh, that I've yeah. got. Much better. Now, this is equivalent. The, the two-minute one-by-one, this is a two-minute bin four-by-four. Four. To get this much light without binning, I'd have to do over a 30-minute exposure. Wow. That's fabulous. But you can see all the dust lanes. and You can see a lot of the little star-forming regions up in this area Yeah. and down around in here. I take it yeah, all back. Highlight galaxy Rocket. out there. Love it. Yeah. And it's headed right for us, and we're all going to die in seven years. Or not, because it's like a swarm <laughs> of bees. <laughs> but it's still awesome to think about. That this thing's headed straight for us. It's another galaxy. I plan on living that long. I don't know about it, you guys. But it's traveling at, happens. what, several million <laughs> miles an hour. Right. I switch over hey. to Roy's view. Gary, can you save that Fitz image or the TIFF of that that uh, that file? Uh, yeah, I can. I want to try something with it. The the bend one, sure. Um, yeah, that one that you're showing there. Okay. Roy, what have it. you got? I'll save as you can do a fit, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is NGC two eighty one. That's Mr. Pac Man. <laughs> it's quiet in space, though, isn't it? Yeah. Looks great though. Look at those little you can see those little dust knots just over on the left hand side there. And that's where there's stars forming inside, right? Yes. I happen to have a another image if you'd like to see it of the same thing mm -hmm. that I just finished the other day. Right. It's not live, but it's cool. We're ready. But it's Memorex. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. That's Whoa. a Hubble pallet? That's Hubble pallet, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Amazing. So what are the colors then? When when you say Hubble pallet, what does that mean? So uh, these are all narrow band. This is going to be hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, and uh, S2, sulfur. I don't know. It's like two atoms of something or other. Um, I'm not a chemist or a astrophysicist. Anyways, are you a doctor? Nope. Man. But he does play one on TV. I'm just, I'm just a guy with a telescope. <laughs> or, or he stayed at a Holiday Inn. Yeah, I stayed at a Holiday Inn. <laughs> so they'll take and map the uh, instead of the because sulfur and hydrogen are both red. So if you put them in as normal colors, it's just going to be a red blob. Um, the the oxygen is going to be blue. So what they do is they map these colors into Hydrogen is green, sulfur is red, and oxygen is blue. So once that's mapped in, then you can go in and modify some of the uh, the tones to bring down the green and and shift it around a little bit to bring out the highlights. That's just you've done a beautiful job. That's my new favorite. Yeah, yeah. And can, you, <laughs> can you zoom in a bit on that? Like, like I was just saying, those sort of dust knots over on the on the left hand side. You can really see those. They're almost like the pillars of creation, right? You can see a bunch of these knots there. 
those yeah. ones. Yeah. Same kind of thing going on there. You can see a dark one over, even further over to the left there. This one up here is... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just fabulous work. Wow. And that's what you get when it's not live. So again, this is not yes. live. Yeah. This is that's... after you've turned your telescope to the sky for a few hours. Yeah, a few 20 hours or so. <laughs> 20 hours, wow. 20? That's pretty that's good. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, man. No, nice work. All right, I'm going to move back to James' view of the moon. Just Oh, it's really clear, James. It's really clearing up now that it's getting higher above the uh, ground, I guess. Yeah, it's turning out really nice. I, and so, yeah, it Fraser brings up another good point. So not only do we, when we're dealing with seeing a lot of atmosphere, but you have less atmosphere to look through as it approaches zenith, as it approaches straight up in the sky. So as you're looking down as it was rising on the horizon, you're looking through more atmosphere, so it's more prone to being all wibbly-wobbly, spacey-wacy. And now that it's rising up, you're having less air to actually look through, so it's calming down as we're looking through. So I, I heard a term in the last couple of weeks that I'd never heard before. There's something called the two-air mass line. Does, does anybody know what that is? No. Mm. I, I think at a certain angle you're looking through the equivalent of two atmospheres. Okay, versus like straight overhead or something yeah, like that. Right. right. Well, this so is I don't know what altitude that the, is. Yeah, this is why you see the like the sun as much more reddish looking when it's closer to the horizon because you're looking at it through much more atmosphere and so more of the blue and green is getting scattered away and you're seeing more of the um, more of the red. Uh, wow, that's so your view of uh, Pleiades is great, Michael. Oh, and now I caught you. You're, you're, no, no, well, let me go back to that. Now that you got me here. <laughs> go check your you email. Go. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow, that's great. Love it. Yeah, this is this is a single one-minute exposure, and I, I pulled the background levels out to get rid of that washed-out moon. But, uh, really? yeah, this, uh, the joys of having a wide field. Now I, I see why Gary's got his setup the way he does. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, but I mean, your planetary stuff is off the hook, so don't uh, don't change. And that's the technical term is literally off, off the hook. The hook. Yeah. <laughs> I think that you know, yeah. I mean, it, there's just there's so much advantage both ways to have that really wide field view. You really need two telescopes, I think, and several different cameras and setups. So if you could invest in that, I'd really appreciate. Well, uh, I'll <laughs> tell my wife you said that phrase. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. I'll get you buying, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Would you like the A, the B, or the C, which is both? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to move to Gary's view. We're just about maybe 10 minutes left, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. you got to know what that is. Uh, the dumbbell. That's it, in hydrogen L. So, and there it is, zoomed in with a little more resolution. <laughs> Sterling, wow. Sterling Gotham, in space, nobody can hear you. Oh, waka, 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 waka. <laughs> I'm going to go home now. Oh, come on, play. Much too, much too <laughs> silly here. <laughs> Wait, don't, don't you image from home? <laughs> yeah. Now for something completely different. Um, is that untracked, or is it maybe just a soft focus on that? Some of the it's untracked, and my focus okay. has drifted a little bit. I haven't refocused since we started. How are, how are your temperatures in, in L.A. area now, this time um, of year? Not bad. I'm probably 68 out there right now, 65. Nice. Yeah. For the rest of us, it's only 22, 23. But yeah, yeah, we're getting cold into the 30s tonight. For, uh, yeah, it's you cold can see, nice. see my the, right here. You can see my focus is yeah. off. Our autumn fog has settled in now. It's just nasty. All right, I'm gonna move to Roy's view. Oh, nice cluster. That is M15. Nice. And believe it or not, that was a 10-second image. Really? Wow. Yes. Wow. A 10-second luminance image. Nice. This is such a great cluster. Uh, what Lori type of Pierce, cluster is it? Lori Pierce is mentioning that uh, that she's going to be, <laughs> next spring, she's going to be taking perfect images of the moon. And uh, seriously, if you need any help, by all means, reach out to any of the astronomers here. Uh, it is, it's a great community here on Google+, and people would love to help you be able to take good pictures. So so don't suffer in silence. If you want to take better pictures, just you know, reach out, and there's lots of people that would be glad to help you. 
Uh, and I, I think I might be doing another uh, photo contest in about a month or so, maybe six months after the last one we did. So really, since we do have some more astronomers and more people doing astrophotography, I'd really like to have everyone collaborate and see what we can do about having another one. Now, around six months ago, we had one that got featured all over the place, which was really cool, because we had we had some photographers from all over the place do some amazing photography of their night sky. And so I put together uh, a lot of those for uh, desktop wallpapers. I can, I'll can i put the link out here later on in the event yeah. page on YouTube, but it's great. So I think next month I'll do another one. Yeah, and for I sure. As you're, as you're watching the, if you've, you know, if you're an amateur astronomer and you're watching the Star Party, that's the cool thing about the event page over on Google Plus is you can post your pictures to it. Uh, we also have the uh, the Universe Today Flickr page. If you do search for that Universe Today Flickr, uh, we've got we just crossed the 10,000 images mark. So we've had people submit 10,000 images to this photo group, and we often pull our favorite images out of that and post them on Universe Today, and we tweet them out. So you know. By all means, participate in, in that. And as well, post your pictures into the, uh, the space community on Google+, and you'll get lots of help there as well. So there is so much support here for anyone who wants to participate in the wonderful hobby of astrophotography. So here's how you know my, my view is live. You can see this tree <laughs> drifting near. I don't know if you can make out the M45 Pleiades here in the center. So yeah. each sub gets a little closer to the uh, this dead branch here. <laughs> That's fantastic. And James's view of the moon has really gotten rock solid now. I'm not sure how well this is going to turn out, but I'm going to try a tricolor image of M27. I want to see this. Should take about a minute and a half. Wow. You're going to do what? Three thirty seconds right here. Yep. Nice. I will. Not to uh, put you I'll on the even, spot. I'll even share the screen that I'm doing it with. Wow. All right. Let's See, watch it. Look how the sausage is made, Roy. Yeah. This is like, it's like a hibachi, right? You know, you go and sit down and watch <laughs> I'm it. Now, I'm now sharing your screen, or... Roy. So <laughs> Okay. So people can watch it. I don't know scripts. how well it's going to turn out, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, so in the center there, that's his, um, that's his spacecraft launch tube. I mean, histogram. And because um, he's in a secret bunker out of nowhere. <laughs> so that's you've taken two images now, right? No, nope, that's the... just one. That's just the uh, the first one was just a, a a centering image that I took. Okay, so the first one is your there red was, image. That was the red channel. Yeah. You've got the counter cool. on the top there under camera. Yeah, control so a lot of center. the people that you know, some of the people who join this are using a color camera, and that's what Michael's using tonight is a color camera. Uh, other people use a black and white camera, and so that's what, uh, like a black and white CCD, and that's what Gary has, and that's what Roy has. But what you can do is that you can take, there you go, there's your yellow one. There's the red and the green, so it makes yellow. Yeah. Uh, you can, um, uh, you can, is that right? Oh, wait, yeah, okay. Uh, right, so you can take three images with three different filters, and then you get red, uh, red, green, and what is it? Hold on, red. Red, blue, green, and blue. Green and blue. blue. RGB. Yeah. 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 And so you get the red, green, and blue, and then you combine those three colors together, and you get a full color image. And that's the way that most of the highest resolution images are done because it just looks so much nicer in that really, really, you know, really sensitive CCD image. Well, it didn't come out really good. It still mm -hmm. looks black and white, but there's color there. Are you sure that's the, the black and white one? The, not, the, not that first one that you took? No, that's the color. Hmm. So is this, is this a feature of Maxim where you can have it set to do like an auto yeah, RGB or something? Yeah, you can do an auto tricolor. For some reason, it's basically... Kind of cool. I'm sure it didn't work. I'm sure you're right. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like color. Yeah. Then there should be like yellow and greens and all kinds of crazy colors. Cool. In there. Go into the window yeah. list and make sure it's not popped behind or something. No, that's just the auto guide. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Well, see? Oh, that's what happens when uh, you spot. Yes, Try something yeah. live. Well, get, that, what that means, Roy, is that you can put them together and put it up into the event page and show us all what you meant to do. Well, it's it, it combined it right here, so I don't have oh, the three okay. separate images. <laughs> oh, well. oh, it just combines it live. Oh, that yeah. would be so cool. So all of our audience is that. extremely disappointed in you, just so you Let's know. Let's see if I can... Sort of stretch it out some. I, I don't think it's color though. It's got to be black and white. 
It's color. I can see the color. Can you fiddle with the saturation? Well, this is now or maybe even color balance. Turned into too much uh, information. Yeah, he he, he cracked yeah. the egg on the, on the stove, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're yeah. eating the shit. I gotta play with that a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, well, if you could do that in the future, uh, I think that would be yeah, fantastic. Be awesome. I mean, the, that's the best of all worlds. If it can do that, just thirty second, thirty second, thirty second, enjoy yeah. a color image. I'm that would be fantastic. Yeah, as long as the uh, the the tracking's not off, it'll uh, it'll stack them pretty good. But uh, for some reason, it's there's a little bit of red in there, but I don't know what's up. I'm gonna blame it on the moon. Okay. Moon, stupid. The moon. moon. <laughs> uh, try full screen, says Ronald Minch. Uh... No, I can I can see it really good through through mine, and it's black and white. And Tom says it needs more red dye, number two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I look at the curves. Yeah, I don't see uh I don't see my data. Oh well. Oh well. Maybe it just crashed on the third image and there's next that. time. We'll forgive ah, you. Ah well. This is once. I could I could do it manually if you'd like. Uh Wayne W says Fraser just a side note, thank you for showing the Kerbal Space program on a hangout. I've had no sleep since and I've missed four meetings. I love this sim. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't played the Kerbal Space program I highly recommend it. I have been having so much fun. In fact, my plan in the medium term is to my son and I are going to uh, give people tutorials on how to do the Kerbal Space Program. We're gonna we're gonna show people how to launch rockets, how to put in orbit, how to land on the moon, and and how to return them safely back to uh, to Kerbal. So it's a fantastic game. I highly recommend it. If you're running, so you can get it on Steam, and I think you can buy it standalone as well. Just one of it's it's a really like realistic view of spaceflight. I really like it. Cool. I think at this point we're now just... I think James has got the uh, the final solid view for us and the rest of us, uh, I think we're pretty much wrapped up. So yeah, why don't we so. uh, say goodbye to people? So, uh, Gary, thank you very much. Okay. Very welcome. Let me... There I am. Ah, there we go. Awesome. And I'll see you uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. Back in okay, LA. great. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, James, thanks for making it to the actual virtual star party. I've added you to the invite list, so from here on out, you should get a a, a nagging email every week as we. Alrighty. Yeah. Sounds so, good. It's been so, fun. Yeah, please come back and uh, and when when I guess when you can get that uh, camera working, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. See what you look like. Yeah, glad you made it. Yeah, that was terrific. Michael, oh man, nice. Your best picture for last. Yeah, I don't know if I had some high clouds rolling through before or not, and it's framed nicely with the tree there, kind of smeared mm. in front of it. So, yeah, thought I'd uh, just leave you with that. It's always nice to be here. That's a great setup, putting a, a DSLR on a tracking. Mount yeah, ultimately, I'd like to put my S big CCD on there with the color filter wheel, but I haven't gotten all the adapters and everything, and made sure there's enough back focus on the lens. But could you have that done next week? No sure, pressure. no problem. No all right. Perfect. All right. And Roy, uh, thanks for thanks for trying an experiment, and I'm really sorry that it didn't work out. I'll get it working. Yeah, yeah cool I think that's being gonna, brave, man. I'm really excited. I think that's going to work really well because it, you know, it took all of the the sort of grunt work out of that, and it just tried to stack up that image right away for you. So I think it's right. going to be great. You're going to have color images with that really high resolution CCD. I'm, I think this is going to be the way of the future. You heard you heard it here. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scott Lewis, pleasure as always, and we will see you again as well in LA yeah, in a couple of weeks. So in a couple of weeks, let's yeah. see what we have coming up. So what do you have on Monday? Monday we're yeah. gonna do astronomy cast. Uh, Friday we got the weekly space hangout. Uh, next Sunday we got another virtual star party. What have you got? Let's see Thursday I've got uh, Hubble Space Telescope. We're doing a new awesome set of missions called Frontier Fields. We're going to be using galaxies as gravitational lenses for the Hubble Space Telescope. To see further back that we I have am, I am so glad you've been uh, 
sort of helping the folks with Hubble yeah. push into this new technology. Their hangouts have been just great. And it's a great group of people. I mean, if you haven't... Oh, yeah. Chance, the, go over to the Hubble. Fantastic. Yeah, the Hubble Space Telescope channel. I mean, you've got uh, Tony Darnell. You've got Alberto Conti, and they yeah, bring Max all Mishler, the scientists Zolt in. Max Zolt LeVay. Zolt is the guy that goes through and actually makes the beautiful hum Hubble images that everyone sees. He takes the data and puts them and makes them. It's just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it just adds a whole other layer to this <laughs> experience. So, All right, well, I'm going to... Put the image over onto James's. Oh man, look at that! James's view as we uh, as we say goodbye uh, for the night. So, I guess people can't see me. There Thanks for watching the virtual star party again, and we will see you all next week. Bye everyone. Thanks everybody. Good night all. Good night.